Hey guys, welcome to the Ethernet Blueprint channel where we focus on ways to help you put a nice network in your new construction home. My name is Tim Trich and today we're going to focus on a little problem that has been plaguing me for a while and maybe some of you and that is with alerting on the Dream Machine Pro. So I love Ubiquiti. I love their products. We've been big fans for a long time. However, that doesn't mean we love everything about them. And in this particular case, one of the huge fails of the device behind me is it does not have the ability to tell you when it goes offline, which if you're like me, or maybe you set these up for other customers, this is a huge problem. Now we have used the USGs, the Unified Security Gateways, with cloud hosting in a lot of our installs. And that does not have this problem because the online cloud instance is always online and will alert us when a site goes down. However, I don't know what the future of the USGs is, and so we may have to move just to the Dream Machine line, and this becomes a real big problem for me. So, in today's video, we are going to go over how you can set up monitoring for up-down for $0 per month, absolutely no cost, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so let me kind of set the stage here and explain what we're trying to accomplish. So because the device itself can only tell you when it comes back online, because the controller is inside the device, there's no way for it to alert you when it's offline. So you need something from the outside doing that. And so really there's just two ways to do it. You can either have the device go out and ping something, or you can have something from the outside try to connect to it. However, if you use the ladder, that can be difficult because now you're opening up your firewall to an outside source and setting firewall rules. And if you're like me and have T-Mobile 5G or Verizon 5G for your home internet, which is becoming more and more common, it uses something called CGNAT, which really doesn't allow you to create the firewall rules that you need. So that leaves us with one option, and that is to have the Dream Machine Pro ping out to a device that's always online and not affected by your outage, and that device will alert you via email or a lot of different ways when your Dream Machine goes down. So that's what we're gonna set up today, and I'm gonna show you how to do it for free. So one of the real popular versions out there is Uptime Robot, and um, they do have a free service. However, the, the trigger or the monitor that we're setting up is actually called a Heartbeat, and unfortunately, Uptime Robot, to set up a heartbeat, it requires a paid plan, which I think was like eight bucks a month. However, Uptime Robot is a great service and well-backed and lots of funding, and it is really nice. But I, my goal with this was to help the everyday Joe, uh, who maybe doesn't want to pay eight bucks a month just to know when their router goes down. So we actually found a way to do it for free. I've set it up and I'm going to walk you through the steps, step by step by step, to show you how to do it on yours as well at no cost. All right, guys, here we go. So first off, I want to apologize any background noise. I'm doing this at my house, as you can see with the background. So hopefully it won't be too loud, but I do have my crew running around here. Um, okay, so here's what we do. I'm going to get you kind of caught up here. So the site we're going to, excuse me, the site we're going to use is called healthchecks.io. And I've already created an account. All you have to do is create an account. You'll hit sign up. It's super easy, no credit card needed. They just send, you type in the email address you wanna use. They send you an email that allows you to log in with a link. And then once you're in, it creates your first project for you, your first um, deal here, your first check, if you will. And so then you can click on here and name it. You know, I, I named mine just to kind of get you caught up with what I've done. Um, I went in and set my grace period here to one minute and one minute. And basically what that means is just that, uh, it's going to check every minute to see if I'm online. And then if it misses a ping, for example, it will give a one minute grace period before it sends me an alert. Okay. So that's how I have mine set up. You guys can use the slider here and set it up however you'd like. Um, you can see it's never pinged. We haven't made a connection before. And the integration we're using is email. Um, I named my email UDM alert. Uh, but if you come into integrations here, there is all sorts of them in here that you guys can do. Some probably free, some not. I haven't tested all of these. Uh, we're just using the email one. Okay. So as you can see, we're all set up 
and ready to go. So now we need to move over to the UDM Pro and get this working on it. So we'll switch over to the UDM Pro. And um, to initially kick this off, we're going to have to SSH into our router. So if you're not familiar with SSH, this I'm going to show you guys how to do it here. So the first thing you need to do is enable it on your console. So I'm in the settings of my UDM Pro. I'm going to go to console settings, and then I'm going to enable SSH. I have to agree to it and hit continue. Next, it's going to have me set a SSH password. So we'll do that. Now, it does have to be quite a few characters, more than eight. I think it's like 12 or something. So, uh, guys, just it's a little bit longer password. That's why it's longer. Okay, so I'm going to hit set. And now we've enabled SSH on our console. So the next step that we want to do is to um, SSH into the router. So, and this is the guide you guys will be able to follow. As you can see on here, um, I've put these steps in here, even how to add SSH in there. So once we get down to this part here, this is where we're going to, this is where we're kind of getting to. So I use putty for my SSH is what I've kind of always used. It's easy. It's free. Um, and so that's what I'm going to use. You guys are welcome to use your own SSH program if you want. I'm sure it doesn't matter if you download putty and this is new to you. I'll kind of give you some little tips, but basically I have no special settings set here. All this is, is just the default. Just make sure you have SSH checked here and we'll go ahead and we're going to type in the IP of our UDM Pro. So we'll go ahead and do that. The first time you log in, it's going to give us a warning. So we're going to say accept. And then I'm going to kind of resize my window here um, so we can kind of go back and forth. All right. So the default username is root and then the password is whatever you guys just set. Okay, so when you get in there, it will look like that. And once you're to this step, you're going to start running these commands one at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is change to this directory. So I'm going to copy this. Now with PuTTY, there is no Control V or Command V or whatever like you normally would. All you have to do is put your cursor in there and right click in the space and it'll paste whatever you copied out of, off of the document over here. So we first change our directory to the data directory, and then we're going to copy this in. Now, before I copy this in, I want to segue here for just a second. My, I tried to do this. I tried to do this yesterday, and the original video that, or the original contents and, and documentation I used to kind of figure this out actually had us create going to a different folder. But when I went to go do it this time, it said the folder didn't exist. And so what that tells me is that somewhere along the lines, Ubiquity updated their gear and it changed their file structure. So, you know, kind of logically, it makes you think that an update could possibly break what we're doing here. So I'll put a little asterisk up here. Just kind of keep in mind that if as we go from 2.0, 2.5 or whatever, which what I'm in right now to the next 3.0 version of this, it could break some of this, guys. We may have to kind of reinvent the wheel and, and, and figure out what, what breaks. But currently, I'm running 2.5.17, okay? So that's the version I am. That's the most up-to-date version um, for uh, as of March of, or excuse me, April of 2023. So I just wanted to kind of point that out because when I originally started doing this, uh, I got an error right away that says, sorry, we can't do it. The error doesn't, that folder doesn't exist. So I basically just took off the rest of it and put it right in the data folder and it seems to have worked. So I'm going to paste this in there, hit go. All right. Next, we're going to change the, the change mod command here actually changes the permission of this shell command. Whoops. Okay. So we'll copy that. We'll change the permissions. Again, I don't have, I didn't write any of this. This is just what, I'm just following somebody else's work here. All right, so we're going to make a directory here called cron jobs. Copy that. All right, paste that in there. We're going to run this. Copy, paste that in there. 
All right. So the next part we're going to do is go into a VI text editor. And I and I do have a little familiarity with this. It's a little tricky to use if you've never used one before. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're going to copy the command in here first. And it's going to open up an editor for us. And the editor looks like this. Okay. And basically, it's allowing us to type in text that it will be able to read to do its thing. So in order to do this, you need to hit the I key on your deal. You can see this comes down here that allows us to insert text. And then next, we're going to copy basically the URL plus a command in our UDM Pro that tells it where to go do its ping test at. So you're going to have to, this is, I basically shortened mine with a bunch of X's. This part right here between the quotes is your specific link. Okay, this is your link, not mine. So I actually put mine, or I'm going to put mine, excuse me. So I'm going to click on this to copy it. I'm going to go over here. I just have a little, um, I have a little uh, text uh, deal here. So we're going to go copy it in, make sure there's no spaces, because copy and paste will create some spaces. And then instead of copying this from my document, I'm going to copy it from my text box here. Copy, go back over into putty, paste. All right, so everything went in there. As you can see, no spaces after my asterisk. Everything's good. All right, let's go back to our back to our thing here. So it says, when you finished, hit the escape key. Done. Oh, click over here, escape. And then you're going to type a colon and then type WQ. So I'm going to type a colon. You can see it entered it down there and WQ, which stands for write and quit. So now we have done that VI text box. Okay. <coughs> so the next thing we can do, this command right here is optional, but it allows you to just verify that it's in there. This is basically like, show me what's in this folder, what this, what, what's in that we just typed in the VI. So basically if I do that, it displays the text that we put in there and we can verify everything's there. And the last step right here, guys, this is it. Very quick. We're going to go ahead and run the job. So I'm going to copy and paste that into there. So you can see restarting the cron job. We have our link in there. So now all we need to do is come over here and give it a little bit of time. And it should switch us to a green check mark once they've kind of established communication. Now, the beauty of this is, is our UDM Pro is actually going out to the internet to talk to this server as opposed to this server coming in to talk to us. So there's no special firewall rules, no nothing like that to set this up. And this has cost us absolutely nothing, has not cost us a thing. So there you go. Within a minute, it went out and it found it. We now have a green check mark. If we click our little uh, ellipse here to get into the thing, you can see we have already got our first one and it's gonna, every minute, it'll just start showing these all the way down, okay? Which is really kind of cool. That's, it's, I mean, pretty neat. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch Wi-Fi networks here. So, um, because I'm connected directly to it, we can go ahead and exit out of Putty. We don't need to uh, do anything else in there. That's done, all right? Let me switch over to my actual home Wi-Fi here and off the lab because I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna break out of the lab here and, um, I'm going to take down the internet. We're going to see how this thing alerts here real quick. Uh, so, all right. So now I'm on regular Wi-Fi here. All right. UDM Pro, well, because I changed Wi-Fi, it's got to kind of resync. Okay. Now it's back up. All right. So I'm going to turn around and unplug this thing from the internet. All right. So internet is down. We'll kind of stay in here. You can see we got a couple of uh, we're online messages, which is nice. Uh, last ping was couple seconds ago, but this will actually, when it, we'll let it time down here, it will drop a ping and tell us, and it should send us an email to this email account right here that we created the account with. So we'll go ahead and let it do its thing here. Now, one thing I want to point out, and this kind of ties in with the, the updates could break things uh, conversation is, um, I did test that this automatically is set to run when you reboot your UDM. So if you have to reboot your device, I found that it will alert you that it went down during the reboot, but it does, this process does pick right back up after the UDM Pro comes back online. So um, 
kind of like how it was designed to do. It's set to run when the system boots up. That's what triggers the cron job to go. So um, even if you have to do a reboot, guys, there shouldn't be any little things you have to do to fix this. It's really the unknown is the update. And so if they update and continue to change their UDM file structure, you know, potentially we might have to redo some of this, but we'll kind of take this. I'm going to leave mine going for a little while. And then as they move to 3.0, we'll just check to make sure it still works. And if I have to make a update to this video, we can do that. So you can see that our check is late, which basically means we missed a ping. And so now it's going to tell us that we're down here shortly. So we'll just kind of let this thing finish out. Um, I'll go back into my checks here. Um, so it's still doing its countdown. And again, how long this takes will really be determined how you, how you have your period and grace period set um, on your side. Because I want mine to be fairly quick, I want to know within a pretty short amount of time, two minutes, I want to know if something's gone down. So you can see we're down and an alert has been set. There it is. So there is our alert saying our UDM Pro Lab is down. Um, it just went down two minutes ago. And so you need to basically do something about it. All right. So I'm going to plug it back in. All right. So now we've plugged it back in. And let's see how quickly it rebounds. And it will send us an alert telling us that it's back up too. So we'll look at that and then we'll kind of wrap up our video here. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> and as you can see in here, it did say, I sent an email to Tim at ethernetblueprint.com, which is great. That's exactly what we want to do. It also keeps track of our total downtime for the month. It says this check is down. Last ping was this. Uh, in the month of April, we have one downtime for 42 seconds total, or actually one downtime for 59 seconds total. And you can see we're back online. We got a new email. UDM Pro is up. So it's actually a fairly nice alert. Some of these alerts I got from, from free services are a mess, uh, but these actually look pretty nice. I actually like these quite a bit. So you can see it's back up and um, yeah, everything looks good. All right. So there you go. Our UDM Pro is doing its checks, doing what it's supposed to do. Um, everything looks really great. And so again, as the UDM, um, you know, as you start using it and whatnot, this is a very easy, that didn't take long and free way that you can have your UDM let you know if it's offline, which I think was pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this part of the video. We'll... Uh... Okay, so there you have it, guys. There is how to set up alerting on your UDM Pro at literally no cost to you. You can see the steps are fairly simple. It does require you maybe to get a little bit out of your comfort zone. I know I was certainly out of mine as this is not my expertise. So uh, leave comments down below as to what you think. Did it work for you? Did it not? Did you get stuck? Maybe we can try and figure out what's going on. Also, if this type of uh, coding is in your wheelhouse and there's a better way of doing it, guys, we'd love to learn from you. So leave us comments, let us know, you know, what we can do better because our job here is to help. There's no reason someone can't have a nice network like this in their new construction home. However, there are some little quirks that we gotta get past. And one of them, at least for me, is I wanna know when my internet is down and this is the way we're gonna use to tell us. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Like or subscribe. Um, we're going to be doing more content about specific home network with the UDM Pro, switching VLANs, access points, and even some cameras. So like our channel, follow us for more of that content. We're going to really start hitting that a little bit heavy here in the months to come. So we can teach you guys how to have a nice network in your new construction home, fully built in, and your network head in. Um, so thank you, and we'll see you in a future video.